Hi, welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski. And my very special guest today is Gloria Bouillon. Did I say that? The, you the did. Good yes. French. Yes. That's from my high school French. I, it's excellent. It all came back to me. <laughs> and uh, Gloria is the manager of the Beverly Airport. And we're going to be talking about all things airport today. Uh, I think um, you were on the show, I believe, when... How long have you had this position now? So I'm coming up tomorrow on three years. Three years. It will be so, three years at Beverly Regional. So we, so we had a chat here about three years ago when you first took over the position. So we're going to... Uh, the, the Beverly Airport has come a long way under your, your tutelage here, your ages in the last few years. And we're going to talk about what was happening then, what's happening now, and, and, and the future. Um, and so, uh, just so our viewers uh, are, uh, who are not uh, aware or uh, familiar with the airport, uh, maybe we can show slide uh, 12 and uh, uh, Zach in the control room, and we can talk about the location of Beverly Airport. And uh, Gloria, maybe you can, you can kind of look at that map and tell us what we're looking at there. Sure. So this is the service area mostly for Beverly Regional Airport. We serve the North Shore area, um, but some people don't know we actually are an international airport. So we, uh, of course, during COVID, that slowed down quite a bit. Uh, though geographically, this is our service area. We are 14 nautical miles north of Boston. And so we have a very strategic location. I'm going to go into that a little bit further in detail um, later on in our discussion. Right, right. Uh, and, and BVY, for our viewers, tell us what BVY is. So that's Bravo Victor Yankee. That is our identifier. So just like BOS, Boston, Boston. Logan is, that's our identifier. Yeah, in Chicago, O'Hare is Ord. Exactly. So, exactly. And that, yes. that's your designation as an international yes. airport. Okay. Yeah. And maybe we can put up a slide five now and uh, we can drill down a little bit on that. Uh, or, okay, so tell us about the fact that you're located in, in th three jurisdictions, right? three <laughs> different municipalities. Tell us about that. Yes, yeah, so we are physically located in three different jurisdictions, Beverly, Danvers, and Wenham. And so whenever we have a project um, with the jurisdictions, so instead of, uh, for example, we had a fencing project last year, that would have been five meetings with one concom. It was 15 meetings with three <laughs> concoms. So for me, that is a lot of coordination, a lot of engagement, a lot of um, working together with those communities because even though we are owned and operated by the city of Beverly, so I'm a city employment, uh, I'm a city employee of Beverly, I still work with Danvers, Wenham, and Beverly for all of our projects. Right. And maybe we can show um, slide 11, uh, Zach, um, and this will show actually the boundaries. It, it's, it's a little bit difficult to see because it's, it's in a white line, but it is the, the bulk of it, I think, is in Beverly, right? The bulk of your footprint? Is that is it? correct. So um, we, uh, we are about 413 acres, and half of our businesses are located in Danvers. Approximately the other half are in Beverly. Mm -hmm. And some of our larger businesses, our corporations, are located in Danvers. And so we um, employ about 300 people um, at the airport, and so about half of those are located in Danvers. The businesses have been in Danvers, and so I'll go into a little bit further detail of the economic impact, but that is our physical uh, boundary, and those are uh, the lines of, the, of yeah. each property. Yeah. And uh, Gloria, the, the Beverly Airport has, a, has an, a, a very unique and interesting history. And maybe uh, Zach can put up slide number eight and you can tell us about the, the history of, uh, of Beverly Airport. Sure. So um, back in, the, in 1928, we were established. It was actually um, by the efforts of the, what is now the North Shore Chamber of Commerce. Right. And so there are deep roots within that. Um, we were the longest paved runway in New England at that time period. Um, and so Beverly Regional at that time, uh, if you look at the, a map from that time period, uh, it was all grass, it was farmland, and of course that looks very different today. Uh, we, were, we were used by the military during the war effort and then given back to the airport, uh, I'm sorry, given back to the city of Beverly in exchange uh, for what was known as if you maintain and establish this airport and adhere and really make it become an airport for public use, um, the city of Beverly took ownership in 1950. Mm -hmm. And now we are designated as a corporate business airport, and so we are a reliever for general aviation traffic to Boston Logan Airport. 
And as I was saying before, um, our total economic impact is 34 million annually and growing. So we have people that come into the community um, through the airport, they spend money at hotels and restaurants, and then we have our projects, our construction, our businesses at the airport. We have 18 businesses and we're growing that number. Um, and so that in total, that 300, um, those 300 employees are growing and we're excited for that process on bringing on new employees and businesses. Yeah, and, and now uh, you, I, I know that you have um, developed a new master plan, uh, which uh, I think is still, uh, is that finalized or it's still ongoing? So we are in the final processes of that. So um, we began, so when I first came on uh, about three years ago, I knew we had one of our planned phase projects was actually a demolition of our longest runway, of our, of our primary runway. And, you know, for me, I looked at it as this is a challenge uh, because we would have lost jobs, we would have lost revenue. Our leaseholds, our corporate users would have actually been able to release their leases and leave the airport if we had that demolition in place. So their leases depended upon having a certain length exactly. runway because that allowed certain size planes exactly. with certain size cargoes. Okay. Right. So I knew, um, and so we're a business, we are an enterprise fund, which means all of the revenue that's generated at the airport stays at the airport. We operate like a business. Um, and so I knew, um, based on looking at some of the data and the historical um, master plans and forecasts that were developed in the past, 20 years ago and then another 10 years ago, um, it needed an update on the forecast data because the forecast had actually been developed during the economic recession. Oh. And during a time when the fleet mix was much different, there were some smaller aircraft us using the airport. Now we have, um, of course, much larger jets, um, corporate activity. And so I went to a meeting with the Federal Aviation Administration and Mass Department of Transportation and Aeronautics, and it's our largest meeting of the year, in which we were planning a phased, we were planning the demolition of the, the runway. And I stated, you know, based on this forecast data, we need to update this to the relevant fleet mix. And, and that was really what started the expansion process and, yeah. and a master plan process in order to go through the, the alternatives, the implementation plan for the infrastructure development. And so it was really an exciting process because everyone in that meeting was really looking at a contraction and a very... Um, a somber look at what was going to happen to the community, <laughs> and now we're in such an exciting um, 180 degree exactly, turn. Exactly, huh? yeah. 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 So, and I was a consultant before doing master plans, so I'm very familiar with this process. Yeah. Um, with the community outreach, we conducted, um, we we did not stop the master plan process during COVID. Um, one of the things that is part of the master plan is community outreach. As I had st said before, we have three communities. And so what would have been an in-person community outreach, open house style, um, we had to do it virtually, which was challenging when you have three different communities. Mm. Um, and we had to make sure that the public outreach was um, felt by as many members that could join as possible. Yeah. And of course, you know, we had to strategize doing all of the community outreach virtually. Yeah. So, yeah, we overhauled the website and, and did public presentations with all three communities yeah. virtually. Let, let's look at slide number two, uh, Zach, uh, which I think talks to what you were just, uh, you were, um, so these are your sustainability goals that you want to you say, uh, you, you've covered some of this stuff. Um, want to talk about that? Yeah, so, um, you know, alongside the master plan, the sustainability goals for the airport, we have we don't look at it just as it's more of a holistic view of our sustainability goals and so our green initiatives that we take um, we're updating the the when we do the reconstruction of the runway which i'll go into a little bit later you know we're going to be updating to led lighting we have a new um, energy efficient buildings our stakeholders are also promoting their own environmental programs and so we 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 go forward with that in the community in which ways we can support you know our fiscal responsibility um, again, the environmental stewardship, and then the community outreach um, that we do. Yeah. Now, there have been um, some changes uh, uh, you, you mentioned to me before in the aviation industry that, that kind of drove a lot of what, you're, what you, you are doing now. And maybe we can, uh, yeah, there's, uh, you want to talk about that a little bit, some of the trends that are happening now? Yeah. So, um, like I had said before, Beverly Airport really was not a place where companies wanted to locate because of the contraction, because of the planned demolition of the runway. 
And once that had changed and I started conducting presentations first to community groups and associations and then I started um, doing national presentations on on what we were experiencing, um, companies from all over wanted to relocate and position themselves at Beverly. Um, so that had started prior to COVID. And then during COVID, we actually were looking at our infrastructure development plans and how to put development on hold because we had to be creative with, with the land that we have, creative in the solutions that would not upset the communities. We didn't have to take land. We came up with a very effective strategy um, to be able to uh, accommodate the aeronautical users, so the corporate users mostly, and be creative in where we were developing them, where we were going to um, put these these companies. And so uh, the aeronautical demand went up once we announced the expansion process. Our non-aeronautical uh, air development went up as well because for, for me, I know you have to... Um, diversify your revenue sources. So that aeronautical, as it's a cyclical business, as we've yeah. seen during COVID particularly, um, but you have to strengthen um, your revenue sources and that means diversifying them. And um, so most of our revenue sources are ground leases, fuel flowage fees, and landing fees. And our ground leases have the highest and um, best use. And right now I'm working on a couple of the yeah. projects diversifying those. Yeah. And you mentioned a sustainability d before. Maybe you can, uh, uh, slide six, Zach, and maybe, uh, Gloria, you can talk to this slide a little bit. Yeah, so um, we, we as a general aviation airport, this is our commitment to sustainability, as, as I had mentioned earlier. It's holistic in our approach. Um, we are making decisions um, with the community, with our stakeholders. Um, we have up, we're upgrading our systems to LED air field lighting. Um, so we're much more energy efficient. We're, uh, some of the comments that came out of the master plan, people were worried about the brighter lights. It's not gonna be any brighter in the, in, in, with the new runway. Um, so, you know, we are looking at the, our responsibilities in a sustainable manner and in, in our strategic path going forward. And we have, uh, I think we, you talked about the commitment to the community before and how you're involving the community. And uh, Zach, slide seven, if you could. Yeah, there. Uh, t talk about that a little bit more. Sure. So um, previously, we didn't really have a way to uh, do outreach to the community. We've done a lot of events. We have had air shows. We've had the Collins Foundation right, I... um, come to the airport. And usually that was about every year. And of course, during COVID, a, a lot of those bigger right. events in which we had community members come out to the airport, that was put on hold. Um, a lot of fundraising events, so a lot of vis good visibility through those events. And so I overhauled our website. We um, conducted a marketing plan, and that brought a lot of visibility to Beverly Airport, to our businesses. Um, again, it was uh, ensuring that the community knew that it was their members, it's their residents, it's their neighbors that are employed in the community and doing business. And some of these jobs are high tech, um, high paying. So, you know, it's it's something that, um, again, it revolves in the community of, of who we employ in the community. One of the things that came out in the master plan, um, people were concerned about noise, yeah. particularly as we expand. Um, and so we formed a noise group committee and um, out of that, we're working with our stakeholders, our businesses, in ways that we can you know, help reduce noise, help mitigate the noise um, in, in a way that is effective with our, our businesses as well as our, our neighborhoods. So we understand that noise is an issue, and we are working with that with our communities on, on trying to solve that. Right. And uh, maybe we can look at the next slide, number nine, uh, Zach. So... Uh, and I think this talks about what you were just uh, you were just saying. Yeah. So where we really excel is with our customer experience. So we have customers and clients that once they hear about Beverly as a little gem, they have um, they kind of spread the word, and we have customers and re repeat customers, and we have continued growth. So during so pre COVID, um, we were we grew approximately twenty percent in one year. During COVID, we were at 103% of our total operations. So the Federal Aviation Administration actually said COVID had little to no impact on Beverly. So we grew during COVID, during the worst pandemic for the aviation industry. Now, was, that, was that unusual for an airport uh, yes. across the country? Yeah. Yeah. So um, again, it was strategic positioning um, pre-COVID to set us up in a way that the expansion was 
was already in place. So those, the companies that were interested in um, moving to Beverly did not stop that um, because they knew of the future of what was to place uh, to take place. And so, you know, with the services that we now offer, we brought on some larger corporations, uh, an MRO that's internationally recognized. Um, it really expanded the capabilities of the airport and, again, marketing those businesses and, and what we can do um, to, to serve the metro area. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned uh, before some expansion and upgrades, and we've got a series of three slides here that we'll go slowly through. I know that there's a lot of detail. Oh, here's um, no, the next one. Uh, 13, if you could, uh, Zach. Uh, We'll go through 13, 14, and 15, and, and uh, there's a lot of detail in these. Yeah, um, maybe you could kind of, I know it's, it's uh, for, for the layman, yeah. it might be hard <laughs> to understand some of these because there's a lot of technical content here, but maybe yes. you can, in general, tell us what you're trying to do here, what sure. the airport's doing. So, as I had mentioned before, we had some challenges with our space. Um, we are confined. We have wetlands on the airfield, which we keep protected. And we are increasing 300 feet on both sides of our longest runway. So we are increasing it by 600 feet, which actually allows the corporate users to take a heavier payload. So a lot of our corporate users were reducing their payload, which means they're reducing fuel and passengers. Mm -hmm. So this allows um, the corporate user to use the airport more functionally and more up and be able to go the longer distances instead of having to stop somewhere and right. refuel. Um, so with that, uh, again, in the next slide, you'll actually yeah, see some next of the changes. Next slide, uh, Zach, please, 14, yeah. Yeah, so we are also implementing a taxiway rede redevelopment design, and uh, the areas that are shaded, those are actual areas in which we have some proposed development. Um, we're going to put some larger corporate hangars, some larger businesses, and that actually will somewhat act as a barrier for noise when you, when you implement these buildings um, around the, you can see the residential area in some of those areas that are uh, near the Danvers side on the left of the, the sli slide. Um, so, so we expect, you know, an anticipated, uh, an actual reduction in noise once we, once we put these hangars in place right. and some of these users because this is a much more uh, efficient layout and, and really does use our space, our confined space best. And um, it, it is al in alignment with the FAA's requirement for airport design. Mm -hmm. And I think we have one more slide in this series of uh, upgrade. The no number, or oh, is that the final one? Okay. Now, um, you mentioned before uh, about your, and, and, and I, I really want you to talk about, you, you've had quite an impact on, on the airport and all the things that you've done. And, and you, a lot of kudos are due your, your way. Uh, maybe we could, uh, you know, you've brought international recognition uh, to Beverly, and you've been a speaker at, at, at conferences uh, worldwide. Uh, and I think we have some there. On this slide, we show you here at these uh, various conferences uh, and uh, those are big chairs there, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, those are, chair. yeah. So um, people started asking me to speak on what I was doing so differently at Beverly and how did we have growth during, a, during COVID. Um, you know, so we had, I, I was able to use our strengths and completely turn around the airport. So um, one of the conferences, I've, so I've been asked to speak on infrastructure development, master planning, and um, stakeholder and business relationships and stakeholder buy-in. So something I pride myself in, in is I've been told I can sell anything. Uh, in fact, all the cars that I've owned, I've actually sold for more than I purchased it for. Even oh, my, even my wait mail. Wait you got to tell me how to do that. <laughs> even my male friends uh, want me to go car shopping with them because they know <laughs> I'm such a strong negotiator. Um, so I've been asked to speak at a lot of conferences in which um, I've talked about, you know, how to interact in the political realm and have stakeholder buy in when you have projects such as an expansion project and be able to have buy-in from the various stakeholders and and the political parties that that involves um, and so uh, one of the latest conferences I spoke at it was 3 a.m. in the morning I was asked to speak in Dubai and I spoke virtually because there was no way I could get there get to Dubai, get to Dubai. <laughs> and um, it was the largest aviation conference in the world um, the global airport leaders forum and um, I spoke with other it was actually the women in aviation business leadership 
And that was something I was very proud of, um, representing women um, in the C-suite position in which, you know, there still are challenges. And I, and I work in a very male-dominated industry. And, you know, I pride myself in, you know, I look different from your typical airport manager and I think differently. And that's actually led to a lot of success, mm -hmm. um, you know. And so, uh, you know, getting the word out of Beverly Airport has, has we've, it's really put it on the map. And for, for me, it's something that I'm very proud of in, in how we've grown and how we're turning this airport into something that was completely unimagined three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, Glory, I'm going to embarrass you a little bit because I'm going to ask you, you recently got a very prestigious award, and I'm going to ask you to talk about that for our viewers. <laughs> sure. So um, I recently was awarded um, a top women in aviation and aerospace globally um, to, to, uh, on LinkedIn. And it's, uh, I, I was actually um, out of service that day, and I came back, and it was all these messages, and, and it was very exciting uh, for me. Um, and, it, and it really does speak of what's been happening um, behind the scenes and where we have come. And, you know, out of this, I really hope to inspire other women and individuals coming into leadership in which you have challenges, but you can challenge the way of traditional thinking. Um, think outside of the box, and it's it's a, a, you know it's endless impossibilities of what can happen when when you challenge traditional thinking, and we've seen that at Beverly Airport. Yeah. Now, uh, the last time I saw you at uh, at a chamber event, you and I started talking, and you you told me something which really you know got my interest, and I want you to talk about this because I think you talk about one of your biggest projects ever, and you were mentioning that the airport will. Uh, uh, be uh, uh, accommodating and building space for small businesses like high tech incubators and things like that. And, mm -hmm. and I was thinking that with Cherry Hill right next to you and with, uh, with Cummings building all those properties at the, the Dunham Ridge, that, that there, was a, there was an abundance and maybe an overabundance, but that's not the case. Talk about that. That's, that's so interesting. Yeah, so um, previous practices prior to me coming on was to actually sell off airport property and to fund capital projects. And when I heard that, it was just, no, this needs to stop immediately. We need to refocus and think of a strategic way to look at um, either leasing out this land, public-private partnerships. There's so many different things that you can best, that you can, that you can use the land um, to, again, diversify your revenue sources, increase that revenue. And so we have um, the, some of the last parcels that were not sold off prior to me coming on um, we, I've been able to market them for commercial and industrial space. So we're about to issue an RFP, and that space, that demand for space has increased significantly since I first um, started working with developers. I started cold calling developers and asking them to meet with me. They saw the space, they saw the connection to the utilities, they saw the close proximity, it's on the drive to the airport. So the airport is right there. So these companies that want to be in um, such a close proximity, a high secure environment, and to be able to uh, reach their destinations internationally, um, you know, without any delay. That yeah. is the type of company. So we're looking at biotechs, uh, life sciences, and distribution centers. So really optimizing that space, creating jobs, creating tax revenue for the city. Um, so it's really an exciting process. This airport will be completely changed in five years. Yeah. So, so how many, do you have an estimate of how many square feet of, of, uh, of commercial space will be available in this program? So it's approximately 12 acres. 12 it's acres? It's a 12-acre site, yep. And it will be all contiguous or it will be in different spots around the airport? Uh, we're waiting to see the best and highest use. Um, so it's, it's mostly in one space for the non-aeronautical sources. And then our other spaces are aeronautical sources. And those are other um, acreage and much, uh, those are also larger areas as well. So we have two different spaces, both of them in incredibly high demand. Yeah. Um, and we're going to have the best uses for that. Yeah. Now, the RFP that you were talking about, is that for, uh, for, a, for an architectural rendering plan, or is that already done and you're looking for someone to build these, these spaces? Yes. So the request for proposal will go out. And then with basic um, requirements and understanding of what we're looking for, the environmental factors that they'll have to meet, and also um, the, the conditions of the land. So we'll, we'll look at the, a creative land use. Um, so it may not be just leasing straight raw land. Um, so we have the FEMA site 
just adjacent to that. Right. We also have the police detectives units there and the airport. So an ex extremely high secure environment that a lot of these life science companies are looking at um, t for development actually. Yeah. Now, how are, how are you planning to finance this? Uh, so we, we have our own finances and then it's also um, uh, through the RFP process, yeah. So these these companies as of, as well. So they would so they would they would pre or they would they would agree to be uh, to to be partial owners of it, or you would own it completely. We're looking at strategic ways to to evaluate the leases. So we we can structure the leases in in various ways that um, really make best use of the land and best and highest uses for the community as well as the airport, so revenue sources. Yeah, and uh, I do want to uh, put up, uh, if, if people want to look at, if our viewers want to look at the, the master plan, I think we have a slide, beverlyairport.com slash master plan. Do we, do we have that, uh, Zach? Uh, there we go. So, and there's, now that, where does that uh, number ring? Is that a general number at the airport? Is that yes, ring in your office? that rings, <laughs> that, we, that's actually, uh, there, there's about six prompts. The last one will go to me. Okay. <laughs> so, so if the people want to look at that, um, um, what the master plan entails, that's the website that they can that they can look uh, look at that. And uh, let's look at slide number 17, Zach. Um, and maybe you can you can talk about this. We have a, just a little bit of time uh, left, so you can we can end on this slide, uh, Gloria. Yeah. So again, you know. Before I came on uh, as leadership at the airport, it was you know it was a regional airport, municipally uh, ran airport, and I, with my background and experience, wanted to look at this more as a business. How can we grow? How can we increase? Um, how can we help the businesses that we have on the field, and and then also grow in demand and space, and then um, you know increase the capabilities and increase the employment in the area. So. Again, the master plan was a starting point. The um, expansion process will be another point, and then bringing on those other businesses will bring a whole new view to the airport. So really, we won't just be an airport anymore. A, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had a conversation before, and you say we will become much more than just uh, an airport. Mm -hmm. Fantastic story, Gloria. Fantastic. Thank you very I think much. our viewers really, really enjoyed uh, enjoyed your presentation. And thank you for for being my guest today. Thank you. This was uh, a pleasure, as Gl always. Gloria Bouillon, the the manager of Beverly Regional Airport. And uh, I'd like to remind our viewers that you've been watching North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and we'll see you next time.